Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and today I'm going to take a look at dual booting my Windows 10 computer with the Ubuntu operating system. And now when I say dual boot, I basically mean there will be two separate operating systems on one computer. And when you start up your computer, you can choose which operating system to start. So I could log out and start up my Ubuntu computer, and then I could restart the computer and then start up my Windows computer later. Now at the time of this video, Ubuntu 20.04, which is a long-term release, is coming out in a little less than a month. So we're actually going to have to, for now, go with an older version. So if I come over here to the downloads, you'll see that 18.04 is the last long-term support, or LTS version. So that's the version we'll be using in this video. If I click on that link, and keep in mind, I'm on the ubuntu.com website here. It starts my download here, and what's downloading here is an ISO image. We'll give that a few minutes to download, but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this ISO image and we're gonna change that into a bootable image. So if we come over here to this other website that I've opened here, this is Rufus and it's R-U-F-U-S dot I-E is the website address. This is an open source project for creating a bootable USB. So I'm going to plug a USB stick into my computer and then I'm going to make that USB stick a bootable image for the Ubuntu operating system using the Rufus program here. And then we'll use that to install Ubuntu alongside with our Windows computer. So let's come down on this page here and let's install this program. So I'm going to download Rufus 3.9, which is the most recent version as of today. And you'll see it installs an EXE or an executable file here. So I'll click on that. And then it asks me if I want to allow this to make changes to my device, I'll say yes. It asked me if I want to check for updates online. I'll say yes. And here we go. We have Rufus 3.9 on our computer here. Okay, now that the ISO image has been downloaded, I'm going to plug in a USB stick here. And you can see that this popped up here, so I can click on that. I'm going to open up the folder to view the files. And there's some default files on here. I can actually remove these. I don't need these on here. Do shift and click to select both and then I'll just delete these. So this is a brand new USB, so there's nothing else on this. And now I'm going to go over to my Rufus program here, and you can see that my device is selected here. It's this 32 gig USB here. And then I'll come over here, and under boot selection, I'll hit select, and then I'll select this image that I downloaded here. So this is the Ubuntu 1804 image I downloaded. And you can tell that this file is an ISO image here if you look at the file type. And I'll press open. And now I'll leave the rest of these settings at their defaults and I'll press start. And then I get a warning here about SysLinux and Rufus wants to download some additional things. I'll just say yes, that's fine. And I'm going to keep with the ISO image mode that's recommended here. So I'm going to say okay. And now it's giving me a warning about destroying all the data that was existing on the USB that I plugged in previously. Since this was a brand new USB and I deleted everything on it, that's fine. I'll press OK. And if you refresh your thumb drive, you'll see that we have all these files here. So we're ready with a bootable USB. Now, we can close out a Rufus at this point. And the next thing we want to do is make space on our disk for the new operating system. So we can go to our disk partitions in order to take care of that. So I'm going to start typing in disk space partition. And you'll see that there's an option here that says create and format hard disk partitions. I'll click on that. Now, you'll notice here on mine, if I expand this a little bit, I already have several partitions here. So we have our C drive, which is our main Windows partition. Then we have this E drive down here. That's our USB thumb drive that we plugged in. Then we have some unallocated disk space. And then we have some other disk space partitioned to another Ubuntu computer that I already had previously set up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all these partitions besides the Windows one here and free up the space for our new installation of Ubuntu. So I'll come to this space here that has 385 gigs and I'll right click on it and I'll just say delete volume. And it says that this was not created by Windows and that's okay because we created this previously the same way that we're doing this now. I'm gonna say yes. And now you see that we have about 834 gigs of unallocated space. 
that should be plenty of space for our new operating system. Now, if you didn't already have separate partitions here like I did, what you could do is you could right click on the C drive here and go to shrink volume, and then just shrink your volume by the amount of space you wanna free up and have as unallocated space. So you could just shrink this, That'll show you your total size after your shrink for this C drive. And then it'll show the available space after the shrink. So whatever you're shrinking here, this will increase. And then you could use that space for your operating system. At this point, we can try to restart our computer and boot from the USB that we made a bootable drive. So let's come over here to our Windows icon and let's go to settings and then update and security. And then on the left-hand side, if you choose the recovery option here, and under the advanced setup section, it says that you can start from a device or a disk, such as a USB drive, which is our case. And when we click restart now, we have to switch over here to a different recording. And unfortunately it's a little lower quality, but when the system restarts, my screen recorder doesn't work anymore. So just bear with me. When I press restart now, you'll see that we have these options here. I'm going to use a device. And then I'm going to use the EFI USB device. Now, keep in mind these other Ubuntu devices you see here correspond to the previous operating systems I had installed. So I'll say EFI USB device. And then I'll choose install Ubuntu. And here I'll choose English and say continue. And again, for the keyboard layout, I'll use English, US English here. Now I can connect to our Wi-Fi network here, the swap shop, and say connect and I'll just put our Wi-Fi password in. This will allow us to install any updates that are happening while we're going through this process. I'll say continue. And then I'll just use the normal installation option here and I'll download any updates that we need and say continue. And now we're presented with an option where we actually choose to dual boot our computer. Our first option here is to install Ubuntu along with Windows. So that sounds kind of like what we want. And then there's an option to erase the disk and install Ubuntu completely over everything else. Now, we don't want to get rid of Windows. We want to have that fallback in case we ever want to log back into that system. And then at the bottom here, we have an option that says something else. So we can create and resize the partitions ourselves. Since we set up our partitions manually previously, let's just choose this option here, something else, and press continue. So now I see here that I have our free space partition, and this is the 800 gigabytes of free space we had freed up previously. So I'm going to select that partition here and press the plus icon over here. So when we're creating the partition in here, you'll see that we have 800 gigs to work with, but we wanna first set up a swap memory. So our swap really only needs to be about eight gigs. So we do 8000 and we'll choose to use this as a swap area. And then we'll press okay. And now select your free space one more time here. Press the plus again. And this time, choose the remaining space here. In my case, it's just under 900,000 megabytes. And leave it as the extension for journaling file system. And for your mount point, just choose the forward slash here. So that's the base of your system. And press OK. Now come down here and highlight the root partition we just created here. And press Install Now. And then we'll say Continue to confirm that we want these changes written to our disk. We'll leave the geographic area here as New York. That's fine. And then I'll make a username for this computer. I'll say Jim A. Fisk. And the computer name will be Jim A. Fisk Satellite by default. That's okay. Username Jim A. Fisk is fine. I'll create a password here and say continue. And then it prompts me to restart my computer. I'll say restart now. And then when it reboots up, it presents me with a login screen. I'll click install Ubuntu. When I press quit on the installer, it brought me to my desktop here. We have Ubuntu installed here, and this is the GNOME desktop, which comes default with Ubuntu 18.04. You can see your applications here. If I were to type about, you can see under my settings here, there's an about here. I can click that. You can see that we're on Ubuntu 18.04 here. Now I'm just gonna make sure my USB stick is removed now. I don't need this anymore. And then I'm just gonna come over here and I'm going to restart my system. So I'll choose restart here in the middle. And now when I run a system restart, I can choose Ubuntu to go into the Ubuntu system, 
or I can choose the Windows Boot Manager to go back into Windows. I'll press Ubuntu for now, that's the default. If I do nothing, it'll boot into that automatically. You'll see we have our new user here. I can type the password. We're back at our new desktop. So that's how you go about installing your Ubuntu computer alongside your Windows in a dual boot system. Thanks for watching this. If you're interested in more Ubuntu or Linux content in the future, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. All right, thank you. Take care.